I always say them wrong, but I try to remember them all. So, hey, before you go, mm -mm, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me a comment. Ooh, ooh. Hello, guys. Welcome back to Life's Deceit with me, your host, Jen Simpson. How are you guys doing? Are you guys enjoying the month of February? Well, for me, I'm a bit under the weather. I've been trying to shake this flu, guys, and it's knocking me down. But guess what? I'm going to fight the power. Fight the power. Happy Black History Month. Happy Black History Month. Happy Black History Month. Fight the power. <laughs> Guys, despite the fact that we're only celebrating Black History Month in February, Black History Month is all year round. 365, baby. But let's just say that we get a special month to really celebrate, reflect, go down memory lane, acknowledge, learn, learn, guys, learn more things about our culture. Being black. Being black is a phenomenal feeling. Do you love being, being black? Because I love being black. Black is powerful. Black is strong. Black is greatness. Black is history. Black is my history. Black is your history. How are you guys doing? I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day morning, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I hope that you guys are feeling tremendous and feeling blessed to be in this wonderful month of February. I hope that you guys are definitely enjoying February. You know, it's always great to really take time to reflect and give thanks for everything, the small things, doesn't matter how small it is, the medium things, the big things. Give thanks. You're able to be alive, you're moving, you have your mind working to make new plans and do the damn thing. So I wanted to start off by saying, guys, don't let people tell you that you're not doing enough. Don't let people discredit the work that you've been doing because you know what you've been doing. You know everything that you've been doing to work towards your goals, your plans, your visions, your becoming. Only, you know, people are going to see what you're doing and analyze and try to, you know, pick at it and be like, uh, you're not doing enough. You need to do this. You need to do that. Stay on your path. Stay the course. Keep standing. Keep working on yourself. Keep grinding. Keep building. Do what you're doing because you know your journey. You know where you're coming from. You know where you are and you know your destination of where you want to be and where you want to continue to go in life. Don't let people tell you or discredit the work that you've done. Just because they can't see it, they're always going to have something to say. People are always going to have their two cents to add in and try to tell you how you should do things when they're not even doing it. So for February, turn off the noise, block out the naysayers, and stay focused. Stay focused. Keep a strong mindset. And just continue to build and work on yourself. Learn, 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 learn. Find the proper resources where you can learn. Find the proper people that you can learn from. And soak up the information. And don't just run with one thing. Meaning that you may see one person say this. Don't just run with it. Go and do your research and find out if that is right for you. Figure out if taking that path is the right one for you. Not because, you know, two people said, oh, it works for me, means that it will work for you. The method may work, but you may need to rejig it a little bit so that it's beneficial to you. Um, yeah, and just keep doing you. Mwah. Okay, guys, so last week I said I wanted to talk about, you know, healing from your parents and having toxic parents, basically. Because I talked about a topic where, you know, when you go through trauma and you don't want to share, you know, what you experience because you're feeling ashamed, you're feeling embarrassed, you don't want to be judged, whatever the case may be. But a topic that we don't talk about a lot is parents. Has anybody have had, to, is, has anybody, sorry, has anybody ever had to heal from their parents? 
I've had to heal from my parents. I've had to actually heal from, I'll just say, two biological parents and one step parent. If you've ever had to heal from a parent, you know what this means. Because, you know, growing up in the West Indian culture, the Black culture, we always hear so often, especially, you know, as a Jamaican, we hear so often, you know, children should stay in a children's place. Children must obey their parents. And, you know, we never hear about parents not respecting their children and crossing boundaries. So the reason why I want to talk about this is because it ties into the healing process, you know, and if you've ever gone through trauma as a child and your parents never supported you or, you know, they never believed you or they never helped you on the process of healing, you have this resentment towards them. And I had a big resentment towards my mother. Um, and it was just the resentment of, okay, as a mother, your job is to protect your child. As a mother, you're supposed to have this intuition when there's something wrong with your child. Where was your motherly intu intuition? Where was your protection? As a mother, you know, you're supposed to choose your children and you're supposed to always make sure your children are happy. That's my belief. You guys may not agree with my belief, but my belief is I should always make sure my children are happy. If, you know, you're starting a new relationship, do you include your kids? Do you ask your kids how do they feel about your partner? Do you go to your kids and be like, you know what, I'm starting a new relationship with this person. I want you to meet the person. Or do you just automatically start the relationship and just expect your kids to accept that person? Okay, accept, accept him, accept her. I brought her into a relationship because I'm okay with them. You have to be okay with them. I also went through that as a child where my mom started dating a guy that I knew from nowhere. I don't know where he fell out of the sky and fell into our house. And all of a sudden, I had to call him uncle. I know him from nowhere. I know nothing about his background. I know nothing about his history. I know nothing about his parents. I know nothing about his other children. But he just fell into my lap, fell into our home, and I'm supposed to call him my uncle. That's another thing I didn't understand. Guys, have you ever experienced this where your parents told you that you should call their partners uncle or auntie? Why? I understand the whole respect thing, but we could have said sir, mister. Why uncle? I just feel like that's so confusing for a child because obviously we know that this person's not our uncle because we're daddy and uncle sleeping in the same, I mean, sorry, mommy and uncle or daddy and auntie sleeping in the same bed. Let's think about that for a moment. Does that even sound right? Does that even sound, <laughs> I mean, incest. Hello? So, you know, we're not dumb. We, we know that something's going on between auntie and uncle, but we also know that that's not our damn auntie and uncle. So why force us to call somebody who's not our aunt and uncle, give them that title, and then expect us to respect the person? You started off with a lie. Let's just call it a lie. Let's not, let's not call it, it's because of respect why you guys tell us to call your partners are uncles and aunts. It's a lie. Instead of sitting down with your child and saying, hey, I know you and my dad and your dad and me didn't, didn't really work out. And I started this new relationship. This is his name. I would like you guys to get to know each other. Let me figure out if I like this person. Let me feel how I feel about this person. Why don't you take the time to see how that person interacts with your child instead of just forcing it on your child? And that's something that I went through. I didn't know my stepdad from anywhere. I didn't even know his last name. My mom never sat down with us and been like, well, hey, this is Anthony Bryan. She never said anything. She never even sat with us and said, hey, well, you know, your dad and I broke up and I'm dating now. And I want you guys to get to know him. So, you know, when I talk about us having to heal from our childhood and heal from our parents, it's, I find it very 
wrong for parents to think that children just have to agree and accept everything that they do because they are the parent, because they're the ones that birthed us. So we have to endure and take what they give us. So for my kids, I'm a little bit strong. You know, my son says sometimes it sounds like I'm yelling at him rather than talking to him. I tell him it's just, it sounds like yelling because that's the love coming out. <laughs> so I always try to like catch myself and I'll talk to him. I'm like, okay, what, what didn't you like? Okay. What do you want to know? Okay. So how did you feel? Cause I feel like when I was a child, I didn't get to ask those questions. It was don't ask any questions. You're a child stay in a child's place. What does that mean? You're a child stay in a child's place. Because I don't really know what that means till this day. I don't think any of us knows what that really means. Because it's almost like you're saying, okay, you're a child on this level. You don't really have feelings like adults do. So don't try to come on this level. But to me, I still don't understand it because I was always told that child to stay in a child's place. I was never able to express myself and say, well, I don't like it. I don't like the way you argue. I don't like the way you guys fight all the time. I don't like to see police officers coming to my house all the time. I'm scared. I'm traumatized. What do you do when your parents hurt you so bad and you can't even express it? Because if you express it, you know they're going to be upset with you. If you express it, you know you're going to get in trouble. What do you do? What do you do when you're literally screaming on the inside, wanting to tell your parents, hey, I'm feeling depressed. And you know the first thing that the mother say, oh, Lord Jesus, no depression. The blood of Jesus is against you. What, what do you do that you can't go to your parents and express them how you're really feeling because they're just going to block it out and completely disregard what you're going to say? How do you deal with it? How do you deal with as a child going to your parents and saying, well, you know what? My body's developing and I'm feeling this way. Can you tell me what it is maybe? You know, I find that, you know, especially in the West Indian household, because I'll give you from my perspective, being in a Jamaican household, there were things that I wasn't taught. There were things that we never spoke about. One, the talk about no boyfriend, the talk about no sex. When why you talk about no boy at all, Romy. If me I talk about no boy, you're not going to like you. Only talk about your book work. When why you talk about no friend, 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 Ronya. <laughs> that was another one. Don't ask to go out no with no friend. There were so many don'ts. And not enough do's. Don't get pregnant. There was not enough do's in my household. There was more negative than there was positive. Like, you know, you'll tell your children, like some people, like for me, my stepdad and my mom always made sure they told me all the things that I shouldn't do, but they never told me things that I should do. They were focused on me having a boyfriend, me sleeping around with boys, me getting pregnant, me going out with friends and doing the wrong things, me stealing, but they were never focused on me choosing the right schools, me choosing the right career, me choosing the right types of friends to have, me choosing the right partner, me helping me decide if you know do i want to get married when i'm older do i want kids for myself what do i want my life to look like figuring out what type of job i want what career path them sitting with me and saying well do you want to go to university or college that was never a conversation in my household it was more so do what I say. My mom wanted me to be a nurse. I didn't want to be a nurse. Sorry. You know what? 
nurses out there, I have to shout you guys out, big you guys up, and give you your flowers because not everybody can do your job. I'm telling you that facts. You have to have a heart and a passion for it because being a nurse is not an easy job. You guys go through things like things that, you know, general general people could never imagine or want to endure at all. That wasn't my career path. Did my mom agree with what I chose to do? No, she, was, she wasn't happy when I told her that, you know, I wanted to be a law clerk. She wasn't happy. She wasn't happy at all. She was not happy at all. And worse, she was not happy that we lived in Ajax. And I was going to be traveling from Ajax to Humber because what was on her mind and my stepdad's mind? I'm going to meet boyfriend. Yeah, that was on their mind. I was going to meet boyfriend. And I was going to be doing the do that they don't want me to do. That's what they were most concerned about. They weren't concerned about anything else. He was more concerned about what time I was going to be home and I had to be home before he was. Then thinking about, okay, maybe something could have happened to her. What if, you know, she got into a car accident or something happened on the bus? They weren't concerned about that. They're more concerned about the things that they were doing when they were younger than me. And then, it, and then it goes back to the judgment. You know, a lot of times you'll hear parents, they will judge and they will speak about the most negative things that a child would do. But they were doing worse than we were doing. And I'm not saying that we have to match up to them. What I'm saying is give proper guidance. If we're going to tell our kids, don't do this, don't do that, don't, explain to them why. Be transparent and explain to them that you went down a path that you don't want them to go down. Explain to them that you built a life that you didn't really want for yourself and you want something greater for them. Like I was telling my son, I'm like, you think I'm being hard on you because I don't love you? I do love you. I want you to live a greater life than me. I want you to explore the world. I want you to explore people. I want you to explore the things that you love, things that you like, and things that you don't like. Explore the person that you want for yourself. Get to know people. It doesn't have to be you being in a serious relationship. Get to know people. Get to figure out the traits and the qualities that you want in a partner. So when you are ready to settle down, you know exactly what to look for. And you're not forming relationships that are meaningless and wasting your time. Learn to set boundaries. Okay, well, this is what I like. And I know that you're not capable of giving it to me. So I'm not going to waste my time. There's nothing wrong with that. The olden days when, I, I don't know if you guys can agree with me, but the way that I was raised, we weren't raised on much knowledge. A lot of things weren't passed on to us. So now that we're learning, it's like, oh my gosh. Like me, I like to say that I'm learning with my kids. Because when I think that I'm doing right, I have to go back to them and be like, tell me if I'm saying it right to you. Tell me if dad and I are not doing the right thing. Tell me how we can help you because we're here to help you in the best way that we can. If you feel like we're not doing right, let us know. And yeah, we'll sit down and we'll take your feelings into consideration. <laughs> no, for real. We will take their feelings into consideration and we'll listen to them and we'll make a plan together. Back in the day, no. Nope. My mom was not open to that. It was her way or the highway. She appealed the bills. I feed our hoes, I she put food in our fridge, so I'm going to abide by her rules. That's the way that it went for me. So even dealing with trauma, there was never a conversation about it at all. It happened. Everybody came to the house, like I said, you know, aunties, uncles, great aunts, great uncles, grandparents. They all came to the house. They all heard what happened. Once they were settled in, okay, this little girl thinks that we care about her and she's going to keep her mouth shut because we're family and family does not talk family business outside of the house. They were okay. They all left and said, I loved you, but it wasn't a real, real I love you. It was more so, okay, we got you to shut up. 
You're not going to do anything from here. So you're good. That's what it was. There was never a conversation after. My mom never sat down and talked to me about what I told her or tried to figure out how I felt. What she did after was treat me like shit. I would say the name calling got worse. That's when she started calling me a slut. That's when she started telling me that I wasn't going to amount to anything. There was never a conversation. There was never a, okay, my daughter, how are you feeling? Do we need to go to therapy? Do we need to go to counseling? Now, today, we have the resources. And, you know, especially right now, this beautiful month that we have, February, Black History Month, one of the things that I do like is how powerful we are, um, intelligent, smart, and there are so many resources for us now to get the help that we need because it was almost like we were muzzled. You're trying to talk, but you can't because there's a muzzle on your mouth. You wanted to scream, but you couldn't scream because you knew that they were going to look down on you. They weren't going to pay attention to you. You're just another complainer. When we cry, our cry is not seen the way that other people's tears are seen. It was almost like, okay, we're, we're meant to just be strong and move on from everything. But I want to tell you that you don't have to be strong alone. You don't have to pretend like you didn't go through something. You went through something. And it's okay to admit that you are experiencing pain, hurt, anger. And you are traumatized. Because it took me a while to say, oh my God, I'm going through pain. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling hatred, self-hatred. I'm traumatized. I don't want to date. And it's so funny because... You know, we have to be careful what we tell our kids because they will carry it with them all the way into their adulthood, like literally carry it with them. Like my stepdad would tell me, this is how he would say it. Oh, no, we're not talking about why, you know, because boy only want one thing. Look at my face. <laughs> okay, all jokes aside, guys. But seriously, he would literally say, no, so you're not talking about why, you know, because boy only want one thing. And when them get it, them are going left. So basically, what I just said was, he said, boys only want one thing from girls, which is sex. And once the boy gets to sex, he's gone. Boom. And if you get pregnant, they're not going to take care of the child. That's what he said. And I carried that with me for a long time. Even when I had my son, I, was, I literally was waiting. Like, sometimes I'd wait for like, his birthday. And I'd be like, okay, when's this guy going to leave? And then when I had my daughter, believe it or not, I was literally like, waiting to see okay her sixth birthday passed because my mom my dad broke up when i was six and i was always worried about repeating my parents cycle reliving their life even though i made it a point to break the generational cycle and said i am not my mother i'm not going to repeat her life i'm not going to repeat her mistakes i'm not going to be forced to live her life because it's not mine i has set my boundaries and I've chosen to live a different life than her and a greater life than her. And that's what I'm going to do. Her story doesn't have to be mine. And I had to fight through it. So I used to literally wait for him to leave because I always carried in my mind that my stepdad said, men only want one thing from you. And that was sex. And once they got it, they were going to leave you. Even though we're in a committed relationship, I still heard that ring in the back of my mind. Sometimes when people say things, we carry it with us and we can't let it go. So we have to really be more aware of the things that we're saying to our kids, the things that we're speaking to our kids, because they will take it and they will carry it. They will literally carry it and unknowingly know that they're carrying it into their relationship and they're reacting in the relationship based off of that thing that was told to them 20 years ago. And that's what I did. I had to break away from the toxic things that my parents told me, my step father you know and that was hard that was hard because when I left home it was the night before my 19th birthday I, I'll tell you guys that story 
night the night before the night when I when I moved away and I never went back home was, was the night before my 19th birthday. And it was just it was just I don't know. I I just had enough. I had enough and I wanted to be free. And I told myself in order to be free, I had to learn to grow up. And I chose that time to grow up. Did I go through some struggles? Of course I did, because I've never lived alone. I've never paid rent before neither. <laughs> so it was hard, right? But I had to learn to grow up. And I did an amazing job. Of course, you go through things in life. But you make a choice if you're going to either lay down and let life trample on you. Or you're going to get up and keep marching and achieving and thriving. And that's what I did. I thrived. <laughs> and, you know, when I said heal from our parents, you know, my dad and my mom broke up a year after we migrated to Canada. Because I came to Canada when I was approx- when I was, no, no, I was five years old. And then the year after, that's when my dad and my mom broke up. Um, when my dad left, I never saw him as much. I can count how many times I saw my dad as a child. Because my mom and my stepfather made it a point that I never saw my dad. And I always resented my dad in a way where I was like, okay, why didn't you try harder? Why didn't you try to see us? Why didn't you fight back? Why didn't you go to court? Why didn't you do more? And I always had that in my head that maybe he just didn't care. He didn't care about us. He didn't want anything to do with us. So it's my mom. And she would always tell us these stories about my dad. She would tell us that, oh, you know, my dad doesn't give her money, this, this, that finding out later that she was getting money. It may not have been a thousand dollars a month, but he was making sure that he gave her the money that she needed to help her take care of us. But she was hiding that from us. And then now when I'm older and my dad, you know you guys know my dad has cancer, I've been able to build a different type of relationship with my dad that I always wanted as a child. You know, I get to spend more time with him and it's unfortunate that you know you wait to the point where you're sick or something's happening in your life to build a relationship with somebody. But I don't regret it because I feel like, you know, God is, he's just timely, you know, he's calculated, he's on time, he's never late and everything is for a purpose and a reason. And sometimes he has to do certain things and although it may seem painful in order to bring out that very thing that he wanted and i got to build a relationship with my dad um my kids got a different version of my dad that they've never gotten before and i got understanding because before i had this resentment like okay why didn't you do more for me where were you when i needed you where were you when i needed you when i was going through all this trauma with my mom's family and her and my uncle where were you i wasn't able to call you and tell you what was going on and ask you to come save me where were you But now I understand, like, I got the clear understanding that I needed. And I was able to forgive him and not hold up any resentment in my heart. And that's what I mean by healing from your parents. Because I feel like even as a child, we have to give our parents the grace that they need. Because you have to remember, they were raised in a certain time where most of their parents had them at a very young age. And they weren't taught how to be parents. You know, they weren't they weren't given the tools to be that supportive parent that knows how to problem solve that knows how to deal with certain things so even for me when my mom chose her family blatantly told me that um name called treated me bad after um i was upset with her i was i was disappointed but i i love her you know when i said to myself i have to understand that my mom went through her own traumas as well And when you go through trauma and you're unhealed, you don't know how to love properly. You don't know how to be a supportive person. You don't know how to be a voice in somebody else's life. So she couldn't be a supportive mother. She couldn't be the voice that I needed. Because she couldn't even be the own voice that she needed. And as I'm going through life now and I'm watching her battle so many things and you know i i pray for her every day and i said to myself i still don't understand why she didn't take the time to you know put herself first um 
to love herself enough to leave a toxic toxic situation a toxic relationship but i understand that you know when you've experienced trauma and a lot of things have played on your mind and when somebody tells you that you're not good enough you stay you stay in things until you hear that voice that loud clicking voice in your head that says you are better you are greater this is not it for you. This is not your end all be all. This is not your life. Wake up and leave. Wake up and do better. And I'm still waiting for that click. I'm still waiting for that click to go off for her. Um, but, you know, when you go through, through parents that have really hurt you to the core, it is one of the most heart-wrenching things. Because, you know, your parents are the first people that you love. When you're born, you see your mom, you know, if your dad's present or, you know, whoever it is that you like, those are the people that you love first. You know, you're in your mom's stomach or whatever the case may be, and you feel that nurturing, you build that bond. So when your parent hurts you, it's a different type of hurt. It's a hurt where you're like, why? And you're always questioning why, why, like why? But I've learned to understand that we're all human and we're all learning to navigate life and go through life and, and do right. And our parents have a story too. They may not have told us yet, but they have a story. And based on what they went through and the story that they have, it's the result that we get. Some parents are willing to, you know, really admit and own what they've done wrong and ask for forgiveness and say, you know what? I'm willing to do the work and I'm willing to rebuild this relationship and I'm willing to get to know you again if you let me. And then there's some people that will just be wrong and strong. They will deny, 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 deny. They didn't do anything wrong. They, they, they did the best that they could. And of course, we understand that we do the best, that, that you did the best that you could. And we thank you guys. But we also need to heal from you. And you need to heal as well. And, you know, I, I find that in the Black culture, we're not able to own things all the time. We're not able to say, you know what? I messed up. And it's a pride thing. When you have so much pride, you can't even say, you know what? I messed up. I know that I caused some things in your childhood that you had to heal from, and I apologize. And I want to do better. That's all half of us need to hear. And you saying that you will do the work is what we want. Nothing else. Is you just doing the work, being being, you know, agreeable to start, acknowledging that you need to start and sticking to it. It won't be easy. Of course not. Because you guys probably have more trauma than we have, but you never spoke about it. But the newer generation now, we are understanding that people go through some hard things in life that requires Deep rooted work, deep rooted healing. And that's all we want to hear. That's all we need is for you to be ready to love yourself, choose yourself. Because it's time for you, to, like, you know, our parents, when they have kids, they choose us. You know, they choose us and automatically they put themselves last, anyways. So we get it. You had us. We get it. You, you had to take care of us. We get it. But wait, we didn't ask you to be here. So let's not confuse it with, okay, well, you had us and we're the burden. You chose to have us. So when you choose to have children, you choose to love them. You choose to take care of them. You choose to stand by them. You choose to do the things that will nurture them into the adults that they need to be and the adults that they're becoming, right? So let's not make it seem like having children is a burden because when you choose to, that is your love burden. Um, so we get it. 
some of you had to sacrifice your lifestyle, your party life, your, you know, living your dreams or whatever, because you had children. But your kids shouldn't have to pay for your choices because they didn't, they didn't come knocking at your door late in the night. They didn't come knocking at your door late in the night saying, you know, choose me, birth me, give life to me. We didn't do that. So at least you could do is let us know that, you know what, we, we were feeling, you were feeling away and, you know, you didn't make the right choices when we we're younger and you apologize, but you're willing to do the work, do the work, do the work for yourself so you can be free, but do the work with us because it's hard. Um, you know, I can go on all night, but I want to save more for our next episode. And I just want to say, you know, use the resources that we have. For Black History Month, I would like you guys to really look deep in yourself. If there is anything lingering around that you know you need to heal from, look up the resources that you need. Get the help that you need. Do the work that needs to be done because there is work that needs to be done. We all have work to do. And, you know, for our children, if you have children, if you have people that admire you, when they see you doing the work, it's like, it, it's, it, it, it inspires other people to want to do the work for themselves. You know, and maybe your parents aren't at the level that they need to be yet or in the position to want to start their healing process or, you know, come to ask for forgiveness. But you keep being the example. Set your boundaries. Set those boundaries and don't tear them down just because. It's your family, it's your parents, it's your sister, it's your brother. Set those hard boundaries and stand by them. Stand by yourself, support yourself, love yourself. Love yourself enough to set up healthy boundaries for you and to protect you. So if it means loving people from a distance, that's okay. That is okay. Sometimes we have to love people from a distance in order to protect our own peace. Protect your peace, protect your energy, protect your mind, heart, body, and soul. So as we continue to go through this beautiful February month and celebrating Black history, Black history is a part of us healing our history and the things that our ancestors went through and the things that were transferred onto us that we never asked for it to be transferred onto us. But we are aware of it and we know of it. And now that we have the resources and the people and the right tools, we can heal from it. We can heal from it and we can achieve great things and we can thrive. You know, we could thrive as a community. So let's strive by giving each other the right words, the right advice, and unbiased. You know, we're not perfect. We're humans and we're learning by the day. Let's give each other grace and love and be patient. If it's meant to happen, it will happen. Don't let anybody discourage you and tell you you're not doing enough. Every little piece that you do is a part of the process. Every step you make, is progress. Don't anybody discredit it because it's yours. It doesn't have to be a huge leap as long as you're making a step, tiptoeing, and you're working towards it. It's a great big ass deal. And it's yours to own, it's yours to be proud of, and it's yours to embrace. So, guys, in order to thrive, we have to take care of ourselves first. Take care of yourself. Take care of your heart. Love who you are and love who you are becoming. Give grace because we are humans and everything takes time. Healing from parents is, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be an overnight process, but you'll get through it. Be transparent. And if you're transparent, they don't want to receive it. Put up those boundaries. Don't just throw them down because they're your parents and, you know, you have, no one said you didn't have to love them, but you can love them and have boundaries. You can love them and have restrictions. Guys, 
thanks for tuning in. Thanks for, you know, continuing to support. Thank you guys to all my subscribers. Guys, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I always say them wrong, but I try to remember them all. So, hey, before you go, mm -mm, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, I'm your girl, Jen Simpson. Mwah. Phenomenon. Cold, cold ink.